Like this one? Yeah. <laughs> I got two. Well, you, you, your, your own life's journey has brought you to a greater understanding of the benefits of fruits, you know? Exactly. And I wanted to talk to you about this because I know you've really delved super deep into it because it's like directly impacted your physical life and the and the issues I mean, that, that you've yeah. been facing and you've come to this you know understanding of really the power of fruit and i'm mean, again i thought I, I asked you before like i'd like to do this without trying to say like this is the one all be all end all like a like hey everyone only eat fruit everything else sucks and all that stuff right so just leave that aside right. to just That's speak about assume. the benefits yeah of what fruit and if we make this potentially even a predominant part of our diet um as our you know our cousin our cousin species yes. uh have done themselves in the primate yeah. world uh the there's a, there's some really huge benefits that come to our life from it. and i really wanted what, to talk to you about what it. you just said about the primate world so this is something that you know we we look at science because a lot of my ideas people look at me like oh you're just talking hippie speak Hip, you know as in it's not connected to objectifiable science mm -hmm. but science is you know trying to objectify everything and mm -hmm. so they they a lot of times when people have bought into that they they don't believe anything that doesn't have a study that's objectifiable behind it even though we have we have a lot of correlative evidence over time of, of, of fruit healing people. It can't be that simple because there's not any money in that. And we all, maybe we don't know, but Nikola Tesla, he came up with a way to transmit electricity for free through the air. And Thomas Edison said that wasn't practical. So if we look at our health system, you see that they will do all these things that are not pra that are practical practical for a consumer for capitalism mm -hmm. but they're not practical if you ate fruit if you realize that all you had to do was eat fruit and what happens is it supercharges your body's lymphatic system and those bacteria that we're so afraid of they actually break down they live in your lymph nodes they break down the damaged proteins they break mm -hmm. down the metabolic acids because you need that stuff broken down so that way you can pee it out and get it filtered out mm -hmm. the problem is that everything in our diet is acidic forming almost everything except for fruit and raw veggies mm. right those are two things that are, are alkaline and, and nuts there's some nuts that are acidic but in general and so if you look at if you look at what our diet the american diet is it's fast food processed food you know it's um you know pizza or you have uh you have uh you know um really protein rich diets yep. right lots of meat potatoes you know starches mm -hmm. um carbs and, and when you look at what adults are eating, they go to, they gravitate to the carbs. If you look at what children are gravitating towards, they go over to the fruit table, mm. like nine out of 10 of them. And what I found is that we resonate with whatever frequency we're at, at res but going back to resonant frequencies. So mm. when we are eating frequencies of death, we're going to resonate at those frequencies. And we might not consider it death. We might say, oh, you know, I'm just resonating at the frequency of a hot dog, but your what's happening is all of your stuff all your mechanics are operating off of that energy like what what are we right we're, we're made up of cells what are the cells doing well they're making they have their own little uh, mitochondria what are mitochondria they generate electricity mm. they generate energy for the cell and we're made up of all the you know billions of cells or trillions or how many it is and uh and so what are they held together molecules what are molecules made of atoms and what are atoms made out of well they're mostly empty space so it's like electrical charges mm. and so we're made out of electricity so when you look at what a living organism has in it that like a, if you died right this second your body would 100 percent your body would be here but what would be missing is electrical charge if i hooked up an ekg it would be flat there would be nothing there so there's electricity inside of you so you're electric all you know, humans are electric electrical beings this body is just like a vessel it's like a vehicle mm. right and so if you consider what you're eating the electrical charge like what it what is the electricity content of this string cheese or of this milk or this steak or a hamburger what's the what's the electrical energy of that you realize like oh my god like there you know the the stuff that's alive is stuff that you know f for example there's not much that's actually living yeah there's, it's mostly dead stuff that's full of preservatives. And so what we're doing is we're coming up against 
our materialism, materialism, as in we're, we we can no longer discount the world as being just for material, mm -hmm. because we know that our by ourselves are non-material, and if we can apply that same logic to realize that if we're not material, then nothing really is material. There's something else behind it, mm -hmm. and it's that electrical charge. Then all of a sudden we change our relationship to food becomes not just materialistic, hedonistic, where we're just like, oh, I just eat what tastes good to me, and I don't give a shit. Because I, I, I can eat whatever I want. But what we don't realize is that what happens is you're eating acid-forming foods. It, it Not only does it clog up your lymphatic system, it lines your gut with mucus. Because your, body's, your body responds, when it digests food, it, it creates an acid-forming food. So it's you could eat something, and it might not be acidic when you eat it. But when your body digests it, it produces acids. And those mm. acids get have to get peed out. And if you don't pee them out, they build up in your system. And if they build up to the point where they're actually, first they're on the outside of your cells. You know, mm -hmm. the, the inner stitch of fluid is all the fluid in between your cells. And your cells have, they get fed by your blood and they, and they get rid of their waste through the lymphatic system. Mm. There's two system-wide fluids in your body, lymphatic and blood. And your blood doesn't do your waste. That's through your lymph. And so what happens is all your waste gets backed up in the lymph and your body responds to acids with mucus and mucus not only does it clog up your lymph system but it also clogs up your digestive system and those little mm. villi that you have in your in your uh, small intestine that do all the absorption if they get clogged up and they stop absorbing then you're eating a bunch of food and you might even have you might you get used to eating a bunch of food and you're not absorbing the nutrients from it and so some people might be really thin they might be able to eat whatever they want it's because they're not absorbing any nutrients um, and, and so that's part of it, right? That's going to be a part of it. And also then you have on top of that all the stimulants we eat. So you're, you're, you're drinking coffee, right, or a Red Bull. And then what happens is, is your adrenal glands that are responsible for the functioning of your kidneys and also for your energy, right, or adre adrenaline, if you are eating stimulants all the time or drinking stimulants, your adrenal glands don't do their job because they don't have a reason to. And that's why people will become addicted to coffee. And then you need coffee. And not only is, so anytime you cook food, like roasted coffee, you're going to be, have an acid ash food, something that's gonna form uh, acids when it gets digested. Or in this case, something that's already acidic. When Any, you're eating. Anything that's cooked. Um, the more you cook it, like tomatoes, they're naturally acidic already. If you cook them, they're, very, they're extremely acidic. So like tomato mm. sauce, no, you know, it's just, it's not about, it's not about black and white. That's what I'm trying yeah. to say. I'm yeah. saying once you're aware of this relationship, it makes it where you actually, you know, you, it's, it's cool where you can, you can understand, I can have some of this stuff, but I could put it in perspective. Maybe I'm going to have yeah. this thing that I want, but I'm going to eat tomorrow for breakfast. I'm going to have fresh fruit just so that way I can help my body clear it out. Why? Well, because I don't want to get. You know, what is cancer? It's just damaged tissue. So how does your body get rid of damaged tissue? Through the lymphatic system. Well, what fucks up the lymphatic system? Acids. Acids clog it up because they create a mucus and your body then all of a sudden can't filter itself. Mm. And you're into that predicament where you're starting to affect your digestion. You can't absorb the nutrients and you're affecting your filtering so you can't get rid of the waste. So what happens if, if my waste here in the house, if my sewer system plugs up, where does the waste go? So that's what happens in our body. So eventually the acids build up so much that they make their way on the inside of the cells. And that's where mutations happen. And then people get cancer. Well, we, we call it cancer, but really it's just damaged tissue. <laughs> and it, it can't get filtered out. Normally it would get filtered out and your body would be good. Your body's an, a miracle device, it's amazing. But when it's plugged up, then it just builds up and you have cancer. And then doctors are like, well, we'll cut it out of you. It's, that's just because they're assholes and they don't know any better. So they're, they're trying to help. They're doing their best. They mm. just don't have a clue of what the problem is. So they're thinking, we'll just chop them up. And it makes good money for them. It's, mm. It makes really economical sense because that's what they do. What are the, when you go to allopathic medicine, you're going to get a surgery, a physical therapy, or a drug. And you might get some advice about what to do. And that advice would be something that would base cursory, cursory advice. You know what my doctor told me? Because what, what happened that you're referring to, why I even got on this journey, 
because I'm, I'm a big hypocrite. I used to eat, I, think, I thought I was you know, skinny, I could eat whatever I wanted. The way that I got here is because I got diagnosed with multiple sclerosis, you know, and, and that was a big eye-opener for me. I thought I was healthy. My, you know what, my neurologist told me, I asked her uh, before I knew any better, I was like, well, what should I do about diet? Because I've read things online that say diet really does help with, with MS. And she said, oh, you know, the data's not out there. Uh, we don't have enough data. And I'm like, are you, are you kidding me? We have, I have a book that has like 20 case studies. And she's like, well, there's your data. I'm like, okay, so here's a doctor that went to however many years, 20 years of, of medical school, who doesn't know anything about nutrition other than have a balanced diet and don't do anything extreme. So when I finally learned after going through a couple books and I found a naturopath, and then I watched probably a bazillion hours of his of, of YouTube videos that he's made answering people's questions, what I learned is that our balanced diet is completely fucked up. Hmm. We're, we're eating out of the five main things we eat, we only need to eat two of them. Not even, like veggies and fresh fruit. The other stuff is just like a treat, you know? It's, but we made it into a normal thing. You know, and we think of our ancestors as being born in caves. Like we think of the paleo diet as being like, oh, that's what our original ancestors got their big brains from, is living in caves, eating animals. But actually, that's not true. Because when you look at what protein is, your body makes its own protein. You don't need to eat an animal in order to do it. And that'll help you survive in a cold climate. So if you're, if you're moving out of the tropics, yes, that would make sense to live in a cave and it's gonna help you survive and, and learn tools because mm -hmm. you're living in a harsher climate. But when you look, follow us far enough, you realize not only do we share the DNA of, a, of primates, is it done? Now it's over. We're okay. still rolling, bro. This oh, is cool. live. Yeah, man. Yeah. So, let me ask you. It's, it's a mouthful. Can I dude, ask I you something? Oh my God, there's. I'm yeah, just trying to give you my stuff. download. So, but let's talk about even. Let's talk about people who are, are they're even despite listening to this, they're not giving up the the meat that they that they love and they're so used no, to. Okay. No, so let's say they're not doing it. But your your what you're talking about though is hey man, it's increasing yep. the content the amount of of of. Of fruit in your life is going to do what it's the reason you want to do it it's because you're gonna feel amazing and it's not about what you want to do I think what I would recommend is that everybody start incorporating fresh fruit into their breakfast for breakfast you wake up think about it you, you wake up after a six you know six to eight hour fasting you haven't eaten anything and your body at that point for breakfast if you eat some fresh fruit, not only are you gonna get the electrolytes from that living organism's water, mm -hmm. so you're gonna actually get hydrated, you're gonna get the sugars that, that are the kind of sugars that heal diabetics. They don't require insulin to be absorbed by your cells. And you're gonna get all of the electrolytes that you need for your body to make protein. Um, so what's gonna happen is you're going to start flushing out the acids. Now you might be able to have, what I, what my, uh, what my, a couple of my books say, is to have one cooked, it's, it's advisable to just do 100% like grapes or 100% fruit, you know, mix in grapes, whatever, grapes are really good. But it's advisable to do that initially just to get your body cleaned out. You know, do that for, you know, a few weeks, right? Maybe four weeks, maybe up to eight weeks, a couple months, and you might start flushing it all out. And then after that, you can start eating more of the stuff that you're used to eating. And what you'll find is that if you do that, you're gonna change, your body's going to shift not only are you going to, you're gonna, you're gonna get rid of doing, like putting your foot in your mouth, you're gonna get rid of getting angry at people driving on the road, that's gonna go away. Um, it's gonna happen because the more you eat fruit, the more inclined you'll be like, wow, I really feel good when I eat this watermelon for breakfast every day, and instead of like uh, a pancake or eggs and bacon. And I used to love eggs and bacon, remember? Because we resonate with whatever frequency we were used to. So as you do this, you just shift a little bit, the more you shift, the more it's gonna be awesome and you're gonna mm -hmm. love it. And it's not be gonna be because you're forcing yourself to do it because we're, we're, we're gonna treat it like we're alcoholics. Oh my God, I gotta eat fruit. I can't eat that uh, meat, you know? And it's like, that's, that right there has got control over you. So you gotta let go of that and you gotta realize like, oh, I can have some meat. But now that I understand how my body works, I know that if I'm gonna have some meat, that's cool, but maybe tomorrow I'm gonna to eat fruit twice, just so that way I can flush it out, you know? Mm -hmm. And then you're, you, you understand the connectivity. 
and the responsibility you have to yourself to put in the kind of energy that helps you be yourself instead of letting yourself get polluted with you know so the things the things that ultimately you should try to limit or avoid dairy try to limit or avoid dairy meaning you know avoid it means you could have it a little bit but don't like make it part of your diet you know just have it for like a cheat have it for a special occasion mm -hmm. once a week or something and that sounds crazy but there's lots of alternatives flax milk tastes to me better than milk dairy milk so dairy is the first one the second week that I, I was going through this was gluten and carbs so that would be the second thing to avoid and that's gonna be huge because I love bread I love cookies um, so you, you cut that out and when you do that that's when you can do like brown rice pasta right so you're still having carbs but you're just getting healthier carbs and that's when you can maybe eat oatmeal you know and maybe what you'll do is you're just cutting it down right you're not doing black and white because anytime I've seen black and white behavior what happens is it just causes us to try to control ourselves and, and that's not the right energy mm -hmm. you know this the way that it works is your body actually is going to like being healthy it's not like you have to force yourself to be healthy because it's gonna make you feel awesome mm -hmm. and you're gonna be like holy shit I'm like I'm doing all this stuff I'm, I'm like my authentic self instead of being this uh, lower level version of yourself that's polluted you know our bodies are temples the Bible you know if anybody is religious they believe in the Bible so they're looking at like oh well you know these people are uh, good Christians they're godly people and I and I like to think about like I like to look at it like, well, the Bible says my temple is this body. The temple of God is, is inside of you. So if, if our body is this temple, what, what are we, how clean is our temple? Yeah. Would be to me a measure of our godliness. You know, it's not about how many homeless people did you go out and feed or did you save the planet or do you sacrifice everything you own to give it to the church? You know, that's an aspect, that's a mental aspect of it. But what, what are you doing to keep your body clean? And when you start to see that, you're like, no, I love, in order to treat my temple well, I've got to love myself enough to put the, the food that's going to make me even more of my best self. And so that's what's going to happen. People are going to incorporate it a little bit, and then the more they do it, they're going to be like, actually, this is pretty cool. Like, I like feeling this way. And it's not about being invincible, but it would be nice to be 75 years old and look like I'm 50. You know, and that's what happens when you eat only raw. That's what happens when you eat mostly fruit. So if you look at what a, a chimpanzee eats, right, because we're our DNA is most closely aligned with a chimpanzee. You look at obviously they're primates. Um, they eat mostly fruit. So a, a primate is an omnivore, but they're a special kind of omnivore. They're a, a frugivore. Hmm. So what a frugivore is, is a, it's a specialized omnivore. It eats whatever it wants, or it eats all things, but what it eats mostly is fruit. So animal protein is a very small portion of its calorie intake. And uh, if we can get out of our heads that we're so separate from the animals, then we can see that if we're eating what our relatives are eating, we're going to be feeding the right kind of food to our body. What would you say are, give me three fruits that are like, that oh, you'd recommend, Watermelon. that are really powerful, yep. like what's your best bang for your buck when you're buying fruit, if you really want to get things started and watermelon. get yourself Start in, eating in watermelon in the place. morning. Start eating watermelon in the morning. I'll have a mm -hmm. half a watermelon in the morning, like a, a mini watermelon, mm -hmm. um, or you know, a quarter of a big watermelon, and uh, avocados. Avocados mm. are huge. You get your fatty, you know, you get your good natural fats through avocados. Um, and your body needs those lipids, right? To have healthy skin, to, to have just healthy organs in general. You need those, those lipids. Uh, bananas. Um, bananas are a little bit different. You know, they're good for carbs. And what I find is so important with bananas is they, they help your cravings. Because when you start this fruit thing, you're going to get a craving. Mm -hmm. You're going to, you know, at, at my, my first month I was like looking at the man and I was like, fuck this banana. <laughs> I hated the banana and what happened is is I, I was going through this detox and it was it was tough It was like a crack. At, I felt like a crack at it. Wow. I felt like I was hooked to this drug of Of things that I was so used to eating and nothing else looked good to me or appealing I couldn't even look at it, you know And I, I thought of watermelon as being this kind of gross thing like a dessert or something and uh, and when I started doing it I 
I was like, I don't think that watermelon works, you know, because my buddy has been doing this for a few years in, uh, in Peter. And so I asked him, I was like, so well, how should I have it? You know, because when I ate watermelon, I got symptoms and it made me feel dizzy and stuff. And he's like, well, what did you have before you had the watermelon? And I was like, oh, it's some chicken. And he's like, well, if you think about it, your body will digest the fruit really fast because it, there's nothing that needs to be broken down. Right? It's got, it doesn't need to break down the protein into amino acids because it already has amino acids. It has the amino acids yet that your body needs to make the protein. So it just goes yeah. right through your body. But if you eat some protein, some, some meat or some carbs, it's got to sit in your gut and then you eat fruit on top of that, that's going to be where it ferments. And when you're dealing with that, it's, it's not the same kind of sugar. It's not yeah. the same kind of process. It, it fucks with you. So it's really interesting to see how we uh, we can heal a lot by just eating fruit. If you're gonna have fruit, mm. eat fruit before you eat anything else. You know, mm. for so for example, what I eat in my day-to-day -day routine. Um, and it, granted, I'm trying to heal my MS, so uh, I'm I'm not I'm trying not to cheat as much as I think what an average person would be allowed to. You know, because I'm trying to heal and, and catch up. So what I do is I eat half a watermelon in the morning for breakfast and then I load uh, you know, about a half a bag of grapes for work and I, I munch on that throughout work and you're, you're gonna snack a lot more because this food kind of goes through you um, there's a lot of water in fruit so you're gonna have to use the bathroom more um, but it's gonna it's gonna pay you back you're gonna feel better and then for lunch what I eat is an avocado with some sea salt on it um, sea salts highly alkalizing um, so we want to become aware of the pH effect of different foods on your body so that way you can start to understand what your what your food is actually going to do, right? It's all about pH. Um, and then for dinner, I might have a cooked meal or I'll have a salad, you know? And so if you try to limit your, your diet to one cooked meal a day, you're gonna feel, you're gonna have to hum, uh, tremendous health. You're gonna, you're gonna, you're not gonna get sick. Hmm. You're not gonna have a disease. You're not going to get cancer. So disease does not live in an alkaline in environment? It, no. And if you look at, now this is from my naturopath, but if you look at cancer patients, they all have an, ac an acidic condition. They're lymphatic, they're natural, like the way that you find your, your acidity, your body's natural uh, pH, is you wait at least six hours of not peeing. And the reason you do that is so your kidneys have enough time to filter out all the metabolic acids from the last meal that you ate. Mm -hmm. And then you're at your default acidity, your, your, your status, your stasis. So you, in the morning, you wake up and you pee. The first pee you do, you pee on a, on a pH strip. And that's going to give you your, your stasis of pH. And if you're at a, a, a 6 to a, a 7, you're doing, you're, you're good, right? Because your pee is where the acids are. So it should be slightly acidic, right? If you're, if you're, if you're below a six, you're in the acid range. So you're dealing with acidosis. And what the acidosis has different stages. You could be a low, so it's basically a kind of acidosis that is maintainable. But it's, it's, a, it's a kind of thing that if you're dealing with your acidosis over time, a low level acidosis, it builds up. If you're not filtering, it just builds up, just like debt. Mm. And you have this acid, these toxins all building up in your system and wherever you're genetically weak, for me it was on my nervous system. Some people have, they get pancreas cancer, some people have, you know, there's just a lot of different problems. There's rheumatoid arthritis, there's all these autoimmune disorders, and, and when you talk about it, you, the doctors are like, well, we don't know, it just happens. It's like a random thing, right? When you see that it's connected to your body's condition of acidosis mm -hmm. you realize that all we're doing is just filling our bodies full of acids and then wherever we're genetically weak is where they'll build up tumors what are tumors they're deposits acidic deposits because mm -hmm. if your body can't flush it out it's going to deposit it and it's going to collect it might not be cancer but it's still a result of acidosis mm -hmm. um what are there any other fruits other than avocados where we can get fats from because I mean I hear a lot about how important mm -hmm. fats are uh, for the developing brain and 
and so on, even just co cognitive ability. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot. Obviously, there's lots of supplements, right? You can get you can get different oils or coconut oil or something like that, or or you can get basically. I think if you're gonna supplement, I think avocados are the best. Mm -hmm. I don't know if there's other fruits that have the same kind of fat content as avocados. Gotcha. Um, I love avocados though. Yeah. I, so I think that's a really good option. And then if you're if you're not going to eat as many avocados, like let's say you live in an area where they, you don't really have good avocados, then you might want to supplement the fats. Getting fat and look at, you want to get something that at room temperature is liquid. Because at room temperature, if it's liquid, then that means that in your body, when it is in your body, your body's a little bit warm, yeah. obviously, it's still going to be liquefied. It's not going to get hard and turn into lard. And that's the stuff that clogs your your stuff. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, that's that's incredible. What what? Uh, how do people? If people were to do a fr like a fruit fast, uh, they're going to reach a wall. I'm assuming somewhere down the line where a lot of the their you know the pangs of their or their normal diet are going to come back in a harsh way. Mm -hmm. uh, that's how, exactly what, you, what happens. how do you coach people through yeah, at that time period? I mean, they need to did know you start not to hating fruit after day seven? I mean, did you look at watermelon and were like, I hate this thing? Actually, I'm tired watermelon of it. was giving me such good energy that yeah. I actually was already starting to do the watermelon on a daily basis just because mm -hmm. my buddy was doing it. And I would see how he would finish his watermelon and he would just be like, oh, that was awesome. And he'd drink the water out of it. And yeah. I was like, dude, that's so hilarious. You're, that's so ghetto. Or like, why are you drinking the water? I asked him one time, right? I was just like, that. No, throw that away. And he's like, no, dude, that's like the best water to drink. And I was uh -huh. like, really? And he, I asked him more about it. Um, I think what helped me was, you know, calling, calling somebody who kind of has a little bit more experience mm -hmm. and coach me through it. That's normal. Don't give up. Keep going through it. You're going to get there. You're going to get through this. It's going to be fine. Your body's going to flush it out. And once it does, you're going to feel so much better. You're going to be glad you did. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and uh, it's okay to cheat, you know, as you're doing this transition. So when I was trying to eliminate these foods, these over these five, it was supposed to be five weeks, you know, five different uh, dairy, gluten, sugars. Don't eat added sugars, right? That's, it's relatively easy, but it's really hard at first because everything has sugar in it. And what's going to happen when you cut sugar out, if you're used to having sugar in your coffee, it's going to taste horrible. It's going to be so gross and bitter. What, your, your taste is going to change. What's going to happen is you're going to adjust and you're going to all of a sudden realize that what normally was normal in terms of sweetness was absolutely insane. It was way too sweet. Mm -hmm. And when you, when you drink coffee without sugar, you're going to actually taste it. And it's going to be, oh, refreshing instead of like sticky and coating your teeth with with stickiness mm -hmm. um, so you just need to have someone to kind of coach you through the hard parts someone who has done it before you know or maybe a naturopath like my I watch my dr. Morris I watch his videos a mm -hmm. lot of times it helps inspire me to keep going forward because people run in, in he's we're talking about you know so you want to know the power of fruit imagine somebody in a wheelchair getting up out of their wheelchair and walking again that's the power of fruit. That's people who have, there are people who have MS. Like when I go to the hospital, I'm surrounded by people in walkers and wheelchairs. I don't see that many people who are, who are not in walkers or wheelchairs. And the people who are that way, you can tell they're on their way to a walker because they're walking, they're not walking good. Hmm. You know, they're having a hard time. Yeah. So it's scary. You know, when you get sick, when, when nature comes knocking on your door, sometimes they bring a SWAT team. Yeah. And they don't, they're coming in <laughs> and you better be ready. And if you're not ready, then you got, you got your work cut out for you. Yeah. You're getting sentenced with some symptoms. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. The body is, uh, uh, is always sending us signals and it's whether or not we have the awareness enough to listen. And, the courage. And, yeah. And the courage to follow what it's yeah. asking us. Yeah. And that's why we need it. We need other people. We need to be connected with other people who have done it before because if we're surrounded by people who have never done it before, it's going to be really, really hard because mm -hmm. you're going to have everybody saying, no, where do you get your protein from? And so then you're going to get tired of answering that question and you're going to think you're fucking up by doing this all fruit thing. You're going to think you're crazy because everybody's going to be like, what? That's crazy. 
you know, as mm. they're eating their mashed potatoes and their steak and the stuff that you would think, oh, this is like high, a high level of living. This is like means I've arrived. I'm successful because I'm eating this really decadent food all the time. You know, and, and then they look at you and you're like, they're like, you're crazy. You're eating only fruit. How do you survive How, without eating mm. things heavy like mashed potatoes and meat? Yeah. And it's like, well, actually what happens is your body doesn't need as much. You're normally, you, they ask me like, how much do you have to eat? You must have to eat so much fruit. And I'm like, nah, actually it's, uh, it's changed. I, I only eat, you know, I have an avocado and a banana. I always bring two bananas for lunch. I always eat just one. Mm -hmm. And then I'll have like the other banana f on my way to the bus or something. Um, but when I go through a day of just eating fruit, I have so much energy. Um, I'm posting on Facebook like I'm a manic person because I'm like so energized and so pumped up about it. I'm like, guys, fruit is the shit. Yeah, that's why I wanted to talk to you about it. Aaron, the fruit man. The fruit man, watermelon man, dude. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I, I was really hoping to talk to you and maybe you know, get, you, get this out and just share it with people so that they can you know, find this for themselves. If you think about the spiritual quality of the things that we're eating, and what do I mean by spirit? As I, the electrical quality. Right, because what is electricity? What is the part of us that leaves when we're dead? Is the electrical charge, at least in the physical world. So that electricity, if you think about the electricity of food, think about how plants, they're one life organism that literally is making this fruit for us to consume, for life to consume. We're not killing the plant. We're, we're literally taking the product that it grew so think how feel how good does it feel when somebody takes your services and enjoys it you know how good does it feel to be appreciated it feels really fucking good mm -hmm. right and imagine another life form that feels amazing because another life form is appreciating it for its value yeah you know and so if you look at the spiritual quality the electrical energy of what fruit is you start to see that it is actually in and also chemically the energy level of fruit is like up here so a lot of times, if you do this, you're going to go through some changes. Your body's gonna flush itself out. It's might, it might be painful for a month or two. But after that, you're gonna have energy that you've never imagined. Yeah. It's awesome, man. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, plant some fruit trees, people. And yeah, eat seriously. the fruit you got. Because yeah, there sure is right. a lot of wasted fruit out there. Get so. it right. You know, yeah. it's all good. You don't have to eat a certain kind, all yeah. of it. Pineapple, banana, uh, kiwis, you know, what you'll find is that your relationship to food is gonna completely change, yeah. you know, and you'll see that you're not just eating one thing. Fruit is a lot of different things. Avocados, bananas, kiwis, mangoes, pineapples, apples. I mean, it's just insane. Peaches, plums, bananas, pears, apricots, cherries. It's, it's joyous. And I'll tell you one thing, when you see your, you know, get fruit and fill your, have a cornucopia at home with your yeah. fruit, have a good fruit back, basket. When you see that, you come into that kitchen with that living energy, it's not going to be a mental thing. You're going to feel it. Yeah. And it's going to feel good. You're going to be like, damn, I feel good with just this colorful Beautiful energy. Colors. Yeah. Yeah. I love when I got mangoes in, on the it's, kitchen counter. It's, it makes my <laughs> hair tingle. It's, it's crazy, dude. I just think about it. I'm like, it makes me so yeah. happy. Yeah, me too. Aaron, thank you, man. Yeah, dude. You're the man, dude. Yeah, spread the word. Fruit, baby. Peace.